Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, we really appreciate you being here with us this morning as we try to make sense of all of it. I want to just flash back to one thing that President Biden said at his press conference that caused a lot of commotion at the time. This is about an incursion. Watch. It's one thing if it's a minor incursion and then we end up having a fight about what to do and not do, et cetera. But if they actually do what they're capable of doing with the force of mass on the border, it is going to be a disaster for Russia if they further invade Ukraine. Yesterday, Putin ordered troops into the region. And the White House, I, it, it seems like the response, even though it was supposed to be quite robust, was very timid. And then you had this splitting of hairs and this question about what Russia actually did yesterday. Do you see what Russia did um, yesterday afternoon as a minor incursion or an invasion? Uh, Dana, th this is uh, angels on the head of a pin. Thanks for you and Bill having me on this morning. Uh, the administration has been so muddled in the way they have made uh, Vladimir Putin have the upper hand throughout this entire time. E every time Putin acts, we are on our back foot. He, he does no, he has no fear of the United States of America and a response that we might take. He can see even this morning, he's now not moved peacekeeping troops in, but moved in his tanks. And we abandoned uh, Ukraine with our diplomats, but apparently that's not enough to support the Ukrainian people. Uh, this, has been, this has been a model of how when you fail at deterrence, when you fail to demonstrate the resolve necessary to protect things that matter, not only to the Ukrainian people, and not only to Eastern Europe, but to the people of the United States of America, when you aren't prepared to defend those things that matter most, then the bad guys in the world will begin to do precisely what you're seeing Vladimir Putin start today. So um, for four years, Democrats said that Donald Trump was in all of Vladimir Putin. And Joe Biden was one of them. Uh, lay out for us what a proper deterrence would have been if you believe you could have stopped Putin when you were in office. Well, Bill, I, I can say this. The, the only thing that has changed in the last 14 months is the leadership in the United States of America. We, we've all known Vladimir Putin a long time. I spent a great deal of time with him and his lieutenants. He hasn't changed. His vision for reinstating the greater Soviet Union and creating a sphere of influence was precisely the same for the four years that I was in office alongside President Trump. We were determined to convince him that there were things he could not do. And we put lots of sanctions on him, but where we could work with him, we could. We had a model for engagement and deterrence that stopped him from doing precisely what you're seeing happen this morning. Um, but again, what could or would have stopped him? Well, we stopped him with an idea that said the United States is going to protect the things that matter. This is the very concept of strategic deterrence. Today, these are things uh, uh, President Biden could have done. We could have stopped Nord Stream 2 months ago. Well, it was much further away from completion. They could have begun to put real sanctions in place. I saw what the president signed last night. I, I must say, Vladimir Putin saw them put sanctions for those two parts of Ukraine, mm -hmm. and he viewed that as a green light for continued aggression. We, we could begin to have NATO move forces to Estonia and Lithuania and Latvia to protect those countries. We could have rallied the West and Europe to say that these are the things that we will do together. They, they've been unable to do each of those or perhaps haven't been interested or focused elsewhere. And then, Bill, I'll, I'll add one more thing. It's not just about this place with Russia and Ukraine, right? The Russians confront us in Syria. Xi Jinping's watching what's happening here as well. So is Chairman Kim. Each time we fail to demonstrate American resolve, whether it is the debacle that was Afghanistan that caused 13 Americans to perish as we exited, those are the kind of things that convince people like Vladimir Putin that, that his dream, his dream of recreating the Soviet Union is something he may well be able to do under this leadership's watch here in the United States. Mr. Secretary, they spent a lot of time, the administration, trying to tell us that NATO has never been more united, that this has really focused the mind. But yet this morning, I see that even Italy, on when it comes to sanctions, is saying, well, actually, we're not sure we're going to take a look, as long as it doesn't have to do with energy. The energy policy that the Europeans decided on a couple of decades ago has turned out to be a disaster. Do you think NATO hangs together here? I'm counting on it. It must. This is, in the first instance, a challenge to the European order, the European system. Certainly, the Eastern European countries need countries like France and Germany and Italy to come in to support them in their time of need, this time when there's a real security interest. Putin has bigger plans. He has more aggression in mind, and it will take a united Europe to lead the effort to confront that. And Dana, one last thought on energy. Uh, the other thing that we did in the Trump administration is we made sure that the European countries knew that American energy would be produced, it would be affordable, and we were happy to provide it to them. Uh, this administration came in and shut that down immediately. I, I'm sure that the European countries realize now 
an, an American energy source, whether it was mm -hmm. oil and crude and gas flowing from the United States to the Keystone Pipeline or wherever, probably wasn't going to be available to them. And they engaged in activities that protected their energy interests. You're going to see higher gas prices here in the United States. Farmers in Kansas are going to see higher fertilizer prices because that energy cost will go up. This has real impacts at home here, Dana, and is something that the President Biden has failed to protect us against. Mm -hmm. Sir, thank you for your time. Mike Pompeo, former Secretary of State. Thanks. Thank you, Bill. Thank Thanks you, Dana. Thanks for coming on today.